Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Pilot Labs. My name is Chirag and today we are going to explore about a very amazing technology called VRF. So VRF stands for Virtual Routing and Forwarding and this is basically required to create multiple routing protocols. So when we talk about VRF, it is said that VRF is a savior for ISP infrastructure. How? Like what makes it a savior? So basically it is an amazing superhero who is there to rescue the ISP networks from the troubles they might face because of their infrastructure. So when we use VRF, we get the ability to create multiple routing tables within the same router rather than just having a single global routing table. So all such things make the management and the uh, control over the traffic a very, very, very better and in a much managed way. So let's try to understand how this VRF can be configured and how we can create multiple routing tables inside the same router. So I'll open the lab here and then we will continue the configuration of VRF. There. So this is the lab which we are going to configure today. We have a scenario in which we have these four routers connected as customer A and customer B. Then the configurational type is divided into three parts. The part one is about configuring and building the basic network. Then part two will be about configuring VRF and the interface addressing. Then part three is all about configuring OSPF between devices. If you enjoyed the content of the video, don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to our channel. So that they all can communicate with each other. Let me quickly boot up these devices and then we will continue. Okay, so I have given the IP address on my customer routers, that means on R3, R4, R5 and R6. So the interfaces of R3 and R4 are configured with 11.11.11.2. .11 hey, wait a second, are we not using the same IP on two interfaces? Yes, we are. And then we are also using the same subnet on the router number one. So in such scenarios, we can basically take the help of VRF to divide things. Now this can only be done with the help of VRF. So even when you are having the same IP address, then then also you will not face any issue. Similarly, on the other side with the router number two, we have 22.22.22.0 subnet connected to R5. Then the same subnet is there for connected to R6. So now we will move on to router number one to configure the VRF and then to put the IP addressing on that particular router. So I'll open the router one console. I will say enable show IP interface brief. So currently there is no IP configured. Then if I say show IP VRF, then there is no configuration of VRF as well. So we'll go inside the configuration mode and we will create the VRF instances. I will say IP VRF and I will create two VRF, one for customer A with the name A and one for customer B with the name B. So IP VRF B and then I'll say exit. Now it's time to bind the interfaces with the respective VRF. So I'll go inside interface gig 0 slash 2 and we'll bind it with VRF A by saying IP VRF forwarding A like this. Then you are supposed to configure the IP address on it. So IP address 11.11.11.1 255.255.255.0 and then you can say no shut down enter take the exit then go to the interface gig 0 slash 1 IP VRF forwarding B IP address 11.11.11.1 slash 24 no shut down exit after this we'll jump on to router number two to put the configurations there as well i'll go to router two enable config t ip vrf a ip vrf b exit interface gig zero slash one ip vrf forwarding a ip address 22.22.22.1 slash 24 subnet and then say no shutdown. Then interface gig 0 slash 
to IP PRF forwarding B IP address 22.22.22.1 slash 24 subnet and then say no shutdown exit after this if I try to have a look into my routing table by saying show IP route then we will find out that the routing table is totally empty because there is no route inside the global routing table instead the routes are added into the VRF specific routing table and how can we check that we can simply say show IP route and after that put the name of the VRF so VRF A when I say that I can find the route 22 22 22.0 directly connected to me inside the routing table of VRF A similarly you can check it for VRF B as well there now it's time to bring connectivity between R1 and R2. So in, in such scenarios, either you can use two physical links, one to be associated with VRF A and one to be associated with VRF B, or the other way is by creating some sub interfaces on router number one and router number two. So I'm going to use sub interfaces, even if you want to use uh, the physical link, then that is also absolutely fine. We can work with that as well. I'll create a sub interface for interface gig 00. So first of all, I'm going to make interface gig 00 up by saying no shutdown. Enter, take the exit. Then I'll create a sub interface. Interface gig 0 slash 0 dot 1, let's say. We'll put the um, Put this gig 001 into the VRF A by saying IP VRF forwarding A. Then encapsulate this with dot one Q protocol by saying encapsulation dot one Q with VLAN two. Then IP address is going to be 12.10.1.1.255.255.255.252. And then we can say exit. And I'll create another one interface gig zero slash 0 0.2 will make it a part of VRF B by saying IP VRF forwarding B then encapsulation dot 1Q3 IP address is going to be again 12.10.1.1 put the subnet mask and then say exit Similarly, we'll do the same thing on router number two as well. So I'll open the CLI of router two here. Config T interface gig zero slash zero dot one um, IP VRF forwarding A IP encapsulation dot one Q with the VLAN number two IP address is going to be 12.10.1.2255255255.252. Then say exit, then in phase gig 0 slash 0 dot 2 IP VRF forwarding will make it a part of VRF B. Then say encapsulation dot 1Q with the VLAN number 3 IP address is going to be 12.10.1.255.255.255.252. And then I'm going to say exit. And if I say do show IP interface brief. Then we can see that uh, the sub interfaces are created, but currently they are all down because my physical link is already uh, like is also down. So I can say interface gig zero slash zero, and I can say no shutdown to make the link up. Now take the exit and say to show IP interface brief again. Show IP interface brief, and there you will find out that all the interfaces are now in up and up state. So. We have successfully configured the sub interfaces and then we have also configured the physical links. Now, after this, we need to make sure that customer A's router 3 should be able to communicate with customer B, customer A's router 5. So in order to achieve that scenario, you will be using OSPF configurations. I'll go to router 3 and we'll put the OSPF configurations there. So this is my router 3's console enable if I show you show IP VRF here so there is no VRF related concept on the customer end this is supposed to be done on the ISP end only which is router number one and router number two in this scenario we will configure OSPF here so I'm going to say config T 
router ospf 10 then i will simply advertise the network 11.11.11.0.0.0.255 area let's say 1 and exit then i will also go to router number 5 and we'll put the ospf configurations there as well config t router ospf 10 network which i want to advertise as 2222.0.0.0.255 and area 0 exit now it's time to configure the OSPF on router number 1 and router number 2 but this has to be done specifically for RBRFA. So how do you define that? You will say router OSPF and if I put a question mark I can define the process ID that is going to be 10. Then after that you can define the VRF which you have created for customer A. So VRF A, router OSPF 10 VRF A. On router number 1, I will be advertising the network 12.10.1.0 with 0003 as the wildcard mask and it will be advertised into the area 1. Then similarly, I will advertise network 11.11.11.0.0.0.255 and the area will be 1. Exit. The neighborship came up with the router number 3. Similarly, I will go to router number 2 and will put the configurations there config t router ospf 10 vrf a we will advertise the network 12.10.1.0.0003 area 1 and then network 22.22.22.0.0.0.255 area is going to be 1 enter and then say exit okay i mistakenly configured area 0 here so i'll quickly fix that so that the r5 and r2 can become neighbors i'll say router ospf 10 enter then we will say no network 22.22.22.0 .22 .22 and we will advertise the network again but this time we are going to put it into the area 1 like this and then you can say end after this the neighborship should come up between router number 2 and router number 5 there you go the neighborship is up now i'll try to ping my router number 5 from router number 3 and let's see if we are able to do so so i'll say end ping 22.22.22.2 when I hit enter okay I'm, I think I need to write that again because of the wrong IP the ping is getting dropped so it should be this and when I do that my ping is getting successful the reachability is up there similarly I can try my ping from router number one as well but there I'll have to source my packet from the VRFA Otherwise, it will look for the route into the global routing table and will not be able to ping. So on R1, if I say ping 22.22.22.2, the ping is going to get failed because there is no information about 22.22.22.0 network in my routing table, in my global routing table. But if I look that, if, by, if I check my routing table for VRFA, I can find the route, I can find the OSPF route for that network inside VRFA. So I need to source my packet, my so I, I need to source my ping packets from my VRFA. And how do we do that? We will say ping VRFA, then put the IP address 22.22.22.2 like this. And when you do that, you get your reply. So the same connectivity has to be configured between R4 and R6 as well. So we will create another OSPF process on this router number 1, router number 2 for our VRFB. But before that, let's configure R4 and R6 with the OSPF configurations. So this is the CLI of R4. I'll simply say enable config T. Let's say router OSPF 20 this time. 
I will advertise the network 11.11.11.0.0.0.255 area 2 exit. So now I will go to router 6 and there I am going to say enable config t router ospf 20 network 22.22.22.0.0.0.255 area 2 like this then I will go to router number 1 and 2 and will configure ospf for vrfb and how do we do that we will say router ospf 20 for vrf B and then we will advertise the network 12.10.1.0.0003 inside area 2 and network 11.11.11.0.0.0.255 inside area 2 like this. The neighborship is up. Now I will go to router 2 and we will put the configs there. So router OSPF 20 for okay no exit no router ospf 20 and then we will say router ospf 20 specifically for vrfv so vrfv then inside this i'm going to advertise the network 12.10.1.0003 inside area 2 and then another network 22.22.22.0 um, .0 inside area 2 exit after advertising the network on both the routers we can try to check the connectivity between r5 and r6 so i'll go to r5 and we'll try to ping r6 from there so this is my r5 if i say sorry I need to check it from R4 because that is the router of customer B. This is my R4. I'll take the exit here from the global configuration mode and we'll say ping 22.22.22.2. .22 and when I do that, I'm getting the reply. So that means the configuration is done successfully. My customer A's, both the routers are connected. My customer B's, both the routers are connected. On ISP also, I have divided the networks with creating two VRF instances with the name of VRF A and VRF B. So this was an example of how your VRF can be configured. I hope you enjoyed learning this particular technology and I really hope you will be practicing this out on your particular environments. So thank you so much guys. I'll see you in some another video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.